Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's our annual tradition. I take the time to go to the vault and take out every single guitar and painstakingly lay them out and hope and pray I don't trip and break one of them. But this is the Trogly Collection at the end of 2020. I hope you enjoy. So this, I believe, is a 2016 SG Supreme. I actually have two of these in here right now. This one I actually bought really early this year. I just thought it was a really nice example. It's got a great flame top to it. They're really strange carved up SGs. Now this guy, I get so many messages about this weird thing. This is indeed a factory finish. I believe it's a 1984. It's an Explorer 3 in camouflage finish. Now for this one, I'm not a big fan of Kalers and this one's got two replaced pickups. So this is not the right review piece for me but I'm really hoping to find one of these with a stop bar tail piece one day because that will be a great review guitar. And this is the Scotty Moore that we unboxed, oh, I would say about a month or so ago. We did find the COA. Unfortunately, I only got a hundred bucks back for the ding, but I've wanted one of these Scotty Moores for a long time. This was his actual signature guitar. Now this is actually a 59 reissue, believe it or not despite the fact that it has P90 pickups. It was just a limited edition. It's got a chevron flame top to it. But yet the neck on this one's kind of like an R8. So it's just a mixture of R9, R6, and uh, R8s. Now this has to be one of the cleaner 335 standard fire brands that I've ever found. This is the one that has that Gibson branding on the headstock. I would like to do a review on this one. I'm halfway tempted to keep this piece because it is really clean for these guys. The Blues Hawk, this is an incredibly nice feeling guitar. I think I bought it, what, three, four months ago, but I'm gonna hold off on the review and demo until I find a blue Blues Hawk. I meant to do him, you know, around Christmas time for a review and demo, but this is a limited colors edition 1990 Gibson Les Paul in the trans cherry finish, something like that. Basically, it's really not all that special. The trans white Les Paul custom is a much more desirable guitar in my opinion, but you know, only 200 of them made. That's why you want them. The 50th anniversary Firebird, I think, what was that? 2011, 2013, something like that. It's in, actually in pretty good shape, except for somebody dinged the headstock up here and it's like, ah, oh, great. <laughs> This little gem we actually found live in a guitar hunting episode. It's got a swamp ash body. We get the blood drop inlays right here. This is the Vampire Blood Moon Explorer. It was a limited edition. It's got the red Gibson logo. It's just a really cool Explorer. I'm not a big fan of Floyd Rose-esque system. So this one's actually a Schaller branded one. So it's not my favorite guitar, but it looks cool. I believe this one's called the ES-235. Really don't know much about them except for the 34 burst finish that this one in is very rare because they did not make that many of them. And I think they're a really cool reissue of a vintage finish. Now it looks like I forgot to take this one out of the case. Well, this is another one that we bought live together on the show. We found this one at Guitar Center Used. It wasn't a steal of a deal, but these things are kind of hard to find. I think it paid what, like 1100 bucks for it. Market value anywhere between like 11 to 15. This freaky thing is the Les Paul DC Pro. It's, you know, kind of interesting. <laughs> I've always wanted to find one of these. It's hard to find the wrap tail variety with the P90s. You can find the humbuckered version all day long, maybe not in the indigo blue finish, but there was one just listed on reverb. I was tempted to pick that guy up too to complete the set. Oh yes, and this year I got my Gibson slash snake pit back. I'll, I'll get a review and demo eventually. I'll tell you guys the rest of the story, but this is one of the fake guitars in my collection. Now, despite this being a weird mix of like ES styled guitars, this is actually a Chet Atkins prototype. It's kind of a weird guitar. It's in rather bad shape, I would say, because it was not stored properly most of its life. I had purchased it from the widow of the original owner. Well, there you can see that prototype stamp. And what makes this one unique is a heavily, like ridiculously flamed neck. But it's kind of a shame that the finish is kind of chipping off the sides. It's got extreme fret sprout. I think part of the reason why I haven't reviewed this one yet is because it's just such a terrible guitar to play, but it's very collectible. Of course, the 2020 Jimi Hendrix Flying V. 
Uh, I don't have the SG out because I actually haven't unboxed it. I believe that's going to be our next review and demo. If you made it this far in the video, I actually got uh, Jared James Nichols to do the playing demo for that one because he just happened to get a set of these guys too. Whose signature guitar is it? If you were to say Ace Fraley, you would be incorrect. This is just the uh, guitar of the week that completely ripped them off. Super distortions and all, I believe. This thing is extra clean. I'm really happy I found this. I bought it probably at the end of 2019, I would guess. I've had this thing at least a year, but it's so clean. I want a complete set of the Guitar of the Week guitars, and I want them to be pretty clean. That's hard to do in 2020. Maybe not so hard if you bought them brand new though. Same thing with this guy. I think I'm ready to start, you know, collecting the Les Paul Goddess series again. I want a complete set in my collection. Skyburst is notoriously hard to find. I've seen fewer of these than all the other colors now. It used to be the purple ones that were hard, and those are definitely the most desirable ones next to the Rose Burst. But as far as, you know, finding Skyburst in decent shape, I mean, this one, it's not perfect, but I think I will save talking about these until, you know, I find the other colors. Same thing with the Vixens. You guys can check out the reviews and demos I've done on those for more information. And this currently is my Adam Jones 1979 that mysteriously came from the factory with a whole bunch of scratches on the top right there. <laughs> this was originally meant to uh, be shipped off to Australia, but instead I had to buy a different one for him. And he just got that today. So he's a happy camper. Now this is actually a really rare version of the Les Paul Elegant. It's the Les Paul Elegant Silver Flow. So Silver Flow refers to our finish here. It's, they made like 50 of these things. It's 100% a collector's guitar, unless you just happen to like this kind of silvery finish. The bad thing about this is it's very prone to finish checking. So you can see all the finish checks that show up at certain angles. But if you look at it straight on here, it looks fantastic. The other cool elegants are the elegant alloys. Once again, I've got videos on those if you want to learn more. I don't think I can part with these guitars. I'm adding them to my personal collection this year. It's, uh, I'm not sure if this one just happens to be a 60s neck and this one is a 50s neck. I'm not sure if I got that lucky. But, I mean, look at this top. It is ridiculous for a Gibson USA standard. And this one, it's really pinstripey and also good. And that's why, you know, before the 2019 original collection came out, this is what you bought when you wanted the best modern day Les Paul standard outside of the custom shop. You would buy the early 2000s. But what makes these guys so fascinatingly unique is actually the back. This one's kind of a, a quilty back. I mean, to be honest, uh, I can't really get it to show up in this type of lighting. I think the top is most impressive there, but this one, oh man. Get ready to change your pants, guys. This has the stupidest figuring of a back I've ever seen. This is my flamey back one. This guitar easily weighs like 13, 14 pounds. I don't have my polarizing filter on here, but you can see what I'm talking about here. This, this is a keeper guitar. Now these guys, oh man. So this guitar, it showed up. It was one of the most filthy things I've ever seen. Now I actually had the opportunity to clean it up about a couple of months ago when Michael Weber came over while he was doing the demos. I decided to clean that up. So you'll likely maybe see these two in a video together. I've actually already reviewed this one. The idea was to kind of compare the two of them. But I remember really liking this guitar. They might not, you know, look the best. I mean, they're cool, right? They got good flame to them, an open F hole. I don't think these actually have a rosewood fretboard. I think they're baked maple, but they get a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. Really thin, skinny neck on this. Now this strap, I've had it, you know, a good year and a half, I would say. You know, whenever I go to list this thing, something inside me just says, no, don't sell it. Don't sell this guitar. It's a sandblasted Strat. So they actually made quite a few of these things under, I think, like the Made in Mexico lineup. But what made this unique is I believe it's the first time that Fender did it. It's like under the Professional Series. I don't know. I really don't know. But it's just kind of cool. It's got a blue jeans vibe. I uh, used it for the first episode of Make Progress Monday and then never <laughs> went back to that series. You guys let me know if you want me to bring that back. I think 
I do. I want to incorporate that as well as a little bit of more like music exploration within the channel. Because I do want to be a better guitar player. And I think in order to do that, you need a bunch of musical influences. Now this guy right here is the push tone. The reason why I haven't reviewed this thing yet is, ah oh man. I don't want to demo all the pickups. I was hoping Weber was going to do it, but I hope we ran out of time. It's essentially an over-glorified Les Paul Studio, to be honest. You get the uh, pickups, you can screw them in the back, you know. Other manufacturers have definitely made a better design since these things came out. But I think this was also a Guitar of the Week, something like that. Guitar of the Month? Yeah, there we go. 2008 Guitar of the Month. This guy, he needs no introduction on the channel. The 27-inch baritone buckethead signature. I am willing to sell this one, mainly because I want to find a ridiculously clean one, like one that hasn't even aged at all, and that's going to be a kind of a witch hunt there. Now this guy right here, this is one I was supposed to uh, do a collaboration with Robert Baker on, like what, four months ago, and it just kind of fell to the wayside. I'm not sure if he still wants to do the intro. I'm sure if you guys want us to, we can, but <laughs> the rush of just getting this guitar is kind of gone, but I believe, yeah, it's called the Fender Performer. And yep, I still have my Coppercaster Stratocaster. So this came from Trade Tuesday Season 2, I believe. It was the end goal. I started with some sort of a glary guitar, I believe, traded it all the way up into a Custom Shop Strat. Now what makes this thing kind of interesting is A, it's Custom Shop but it's mainly the uh, bird's eye maple neck with, with a lot of flame figuring to it. It's quite the sight to behold in person. It's a really pretty guitar. I always get comments about this one. This one was 28 out of 30 of them made. I think it was uh, late 90s, something like that. I think 96, 97. To be honest, not the best playing Stratocaster ever, but it's because it has old flat wound strings on it, so not quite what I'm used to. This one, oh boy. I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but take close mention and look of the sides of this thing. There is quite the story behind this, and I actually got a celebrity guest collaborating on this because he happened to have done something to this guitar. And yes, my Aldo Nova Studio XPL collection here. All right, I've made the executive decision, guys. I'm not selling them. They're staying with me. They are in the Trogley's Future Museum collection here. You can't replace these things. On eBay, somebody saw this video. They always wondered what they had, and now they have it. Now his is apparently the first one made, and he's... but these are just fantastic little oddities, 1986. And the Aldo Nova signature, maybe not the official, official one. You can really only call the first two that were made for Aldo, the Aldo Novas. But definitely check out both of these reviews and demos. They were fantastic videos. I would say they're within, you know, my top 10 videos this year because, I mean, that is silly rare. And I'm glad I came to my senses before, you know, I let it go. This guy right here, I bought due to internet peer pressure. <laughs> the uh, green Ibanez Pia. We also have its sister over here, the Pink Panther. I guess this one was more so internet pressure. They're kind of cool guitars. They look nice under black light, that's for sure. You can check out the full review and demo on those guys. I'm not much of a shredder, but you know, they're pretty guitars. This is one of my buddies, Les Paul Customs. This one's actually already been sold. Fun story, USPS. It took them, uh, I think, two and a half weeks to deliver this guy's check. I mean, we're about ready to uh, stop payment and uh, find some other way for him to pay. But we've got that all taken care of now. And this thing I bought from the original owner. He was really reluctant to let his Heritage Series 80 Elite go. Now, what I like about this guitar is it's kind of a mix match top. You've got the super heavy quiltiness over here, and then the really, really tight quilty look over here. <laughs> oh man, you gotta love the early 80s. It might not be a perfect match, but it's a perfect match for me. Um, I'm kind of on the fence if I add this one to the collection or not. It's in pretty clean shape, and the top is nice, but there are some legitimate monster tops out there. And speaking of nice tops, this one I imported from Japan. It's kind of more beat up than I thought it would be. So, I mean, it's not super, super expensive. What I like about this one is how just active the top is. I mean, obviously not very good lighting right now. A piece of Gibson history. It's the Gibson Sonics 
prototype. What made this one different from all the rest? It's actually a hollow body. Check out the full review and demo on this one. You will definitely enjoy learning about that weird thing. I'm kind of contemplating keeping that one. You certainly won't find another Sonics quite like that. And, you know, I pretty much hate all the other Sonics guitars. So if you have to have a Sonics in your collection, it might as well be the prototype, right? Especially when it's clean. This guy is an Ovation Thunderbird, I believe. This is just in on consignment. I don't actually own it. You can check it out in my reverb shop. Link in the description. Similar story as my Black Les Paul Custom. I've got one of the uh, 70s Explorers here. It's got to get shipped off very soon. It was the last guitar that I sold in 2020. Fun little fact. This guy is the second fake. Did you find it? Jackson has not done a signature bucket head. I got this guitar as a freebie because I purchased a Buckethead Studio and a Buckethead Signature from the same guy. And it was just kind of a collection complete set type thing. So, I mean, I don't really sell fake guitars, so it's, it's just kind of here in limbo. If you're watching my videos when I'm talking about the case, like the old style when I do B-roll, if you look right over here in the corner, you'll actually see this guitar in a gig bag, and I dress them up in this Gibson Custom Shop jacket that I own, and I put the Buckethead KFC thing on top of it, and you see the little smiley face there? Very few people have caught that or at least commented about it, but yep, this thing, that's what's in there. Now, if you don't want the next unboxing episode spoiled for you, uh, click off now. Have a good year. We'll see you guys tomorrow on the next episode. But just in case you want to see some stuff, I won't tell you the story on these. But I have this really decked out Jackson with like, I think he said Fishman Fluence pickups. And yeah, it's just crazy. Here we have a fan built guitar for the show they sent in. It's got the Trogly branding. You can find this by looking up Les G, Les Paul SG. And over here, you know, Glary Guitars. I mean, not sponsored by Glary, but I have had many, many, many episodes sponsored by these guys. I mean, they're, they're not the best guitars in the world, but you know, if you just need something cheap, they do the job. That's all I've got to say. And like these basses, they're such a good value. It's like, I don't have any other bass, so I might as well just keep them so i've got kind of a p jazz bass mixture there and just a p bass here this is just a garbage guitar it's i think you get them off of amazon i was just trying to sell it for a family member you can look up this video as uh the in-laws need help selling a guitar or something like that you know i don't even think their fender guitar is sold to be honest that might be uh, sitting somewhere yet too now these sgs uh i'm not going to tell you how i got them yet because that's Probably tomorrow's episode, but this is an Angus Young signature SG, early 2000s. And this is the other SG Supreme from, I think this one's 2015, the other 16. That's both of the colors of this run, and my goodness, this is an absolutely insane one. However, unfortunately, it's got the common issue these guys have where the bridge is pretty much all the way decked down. The action's okay. I mean, you're not going to struggle to play this guitar, but if you wanted it even lower, uh, yeah, yeah, good, good luck unless you carve some of the top out. And last for the SGs, we get an SGS3, I believe they call this one. Pretty much what made these things fantastic is before the original collection came out, you could not get a sideways Vibrola on anything. That's why these things sold for crazy money. Other than that, why do they still sell for crazy money? Well, I think it's because triple pickups it's kind of like a a black sg custom in a way except for it's got a standard neck i do have an old video on one of these and to be honest i i don't like the sideways trims but i think they look fantastic and this guy you know i always get people asking me hey what's with that uh that little project epiphone you got there can i have that guitar can i buy it for really cheap no this is the guitar that my mother bought for me. It was like my first real, real guitar. I had an Epiphone Special 2 before this, but I mean, I remember when my mom bought this, 600 bucks, I was like, oh, that's really expensive. I feel bad, so I better get some good use out of it. And I did, but the reason why it's in this condition is simply because I had this bright idea to transform it into like 70s, 80s specs. So I ripped everything out of it. I had Tim Shaw PAFs ready to put in here, the 83 pots, 
you know, all the vintage style bridges. And then it's like, oh, this stuff does not fit without modification. So I kind of started, you know, uh, dremeling with a sanding bit just to kind of make the pickups fit. Uh, you can see on the back here where I was trying to, you know, file some of this back away so I could fit the whole apparatus in there. Yeah, needless to say, that project never got done. But I hope one day when I get caught up on guitars, we can uh, revisit that thing, I guess. And the last one for today that we will talk about is this one. The Jared James Nichols Signature Blues Power Old Glory. Uh, check his Instagram out if you like this guitar, because there may or may not be another version coming soon. I think that's all I can say about that. But if you remember, when I did the review, this was actually a personal gift from him to me. I decided not to play this guitar because, uh, yeah, then that won't wear off. Because <laughs> uh, a couple of YouTubers got these. I think you sent them to like two or three of us. Because I am excited and a little sad to tell you guys that this was the last year of the Troglies Guitar Show. Well, in this location anyways. I'm uh, fixing to move. I think by, the t by this time next year, hopefully we have a bigger space for this show. I'm really excited with a whole bunch of stuff I've got planned. Uh, not only is the YouTube channel going to get better, but just wait until... <laughs> wait until I get up and running what I've been working on here, and I think it's going to change the way that we research and talk about guitars. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, walkthrough of all the guitars I have. To be 100% completely honest with you guys, this is not all of them. Like, once again, I forgot to do look at this one again. This is the other fake. This is the EDS 1275 double neck. This was given to me by a lawyer of the show because he's like, I can't sell it, so I might as well just give it to you. And my initial intentions were to saw the thing in half because how much fun would that be for a video? I've always wanted to liberate an EDS 1275, but... The darn thing just had to have this flame maple strip and it's absolutely gorgeous and I can't sell it. So we'll eventually do a, this is how bad Chibson guitars are video, but it's very, very low priority. It'll just kind of sit in my room. Over here, we got Epiphone Mini Guitar Pee Wee. It's got, it's got that vintage 72 Gibson T-top in it. It's also got the flip-out winding tuners. The downside is I can't get the neck angle right again. I took the neck off and I was trying to get it right and yeah, it's just completely unplayable. So it's just sat like that ever since I made that video on it. And as of right now, I only have two of the original collection prototypes. I'm thinking I might keep the Ice-T standard for myself because that was the nicest one. And then we've got about eight guitars that are just waiting to be unboxed on the show. All right, troglodytes. I hope you enjoyed our New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day special here depending on where in the world you're watching this and all that. I hope you enjoyed 2020. I mean, we have done so many different video styles. I hope to keep evolving the show and, uh, you know, actually starting to piece together my museum collection and uh, one day even opening that. All right, troglodytes, for the last time in year 2020, take care.